Alright, so we just received uh, two packages here uh, with more Atari games. Let's uh, take a look at what we have. Check this one out first. And I uh, have not really opened this up at all except for this, just the box, so we'll see uh, exactly what we have here. Let's see if we can take this out first. Okay. Looks like they have rubber bands around right here. Alright, so that's a little bit of a struggle right there. What we got here? Warplock. This is a uh, data age game. You can see the uh, it's a tad bit worn out. Looks like it's been played quite a bit, and I do not like that. I hate when people write on stuff. So I'm going to try to uh, remove that. Uh, this is Warplock, so we're going to put that one beside it, and we're going to do a couple of tricks to see if we can clean that off. Now, hopefully. This hasn't been on there for a long time, which I'm assuming that it probably is. And, uh, yeah. Because I've seen cartridges where that actually seeped through the actual ink, and then when you try to remove it, it's all white. We'll do a little experiment, we'll see what happens. And we have a uh, Pitfall, and, uh, it's a BS person, which is bullshit. That stands for bullshit right there. Decided to put his initials on the cartridge again. And this is one game I did not have. It's a very common game. There's nothing really rare about it. Uh, but it's nice to have it in my collection. Except for uh, BS. And then we have Ego Mania. And this cartridge is in great shape. It's uh, US Games. It looks pretty clean, for the exception of BS, which is, uh, you know what that stands for. I mean, what the hell, man? Jeez. That's a little possessive to write your initials on there. What the hell? And we have another uh, US Games cartridge. Uh, name this game and win $10,000. So they had a little contest there. Some more Activision. division. Uh, name this game. Name this game. That's probably a joke I'm imagining, so this... Yeah, that's the name of the game. Name this game. Yeah. That BS initial, once again. And then we have another cartridge right here by Data Age. And uh, this game is called Journey Escape. And it has a very, very cool label right there. Uh, awesome artwork. It's uh, one or two players, joystick controller and all that stuff, and of course, once again, we have uh, that guy right there. We have more uh, rubber bands here, so we have to take these off, and hopefully he did not write on this, because I'll kill the guy if he does. We have another copy of Frogs and Flies, which I already have this, so... Um, that son of a bitch actually wrote BS right there. Ain't that something? And my battery's about to die, but you see here is Snakes. Another uh, Data Age game, and uh, that son of a bitch. Man. And the cartridge is in... Uh, Okay, shape. The labels, you know, as you would, you would expect for his age, but god dang it, what the hell. Then we have Word Zapper, which I believe I might actually have this already. And, uh, there we go again, right there. BS. That's a bunch of BS. And the, it's a shame, it's the uh, label's in good shape. Uh, almost had another avalanche over there. Then we have Pac-Man, and right on Pac-Man's head, BS. That is some BS right there. Now, uh, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, the end label looks pretty clean. And we have Airplock. We got Airplock, a data age game, and once again, that guy. And this oh 
Then we have Kaboom, which I believe I might have this in there. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. What the hell is going on here, man? Then in this bag right here, we have a bunch of Blue Label games, which I... We got a bunch of Blue Label games, and I'm guessing that this may be a little bit more rare than uh, your standard label games. Probably not that rare, but yeah, we got River Reed, and they, they're actually in pretty good shape too. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, this is a Pitfall, Trapper Command, which I played that already, but I wonder if there's any differences between that and your standard game. Boxing, Ghostbusters, these are all Activision games, I guess they released them at what new labels. I'm not sure if they're exactly, I'm assuming they're, they're exactly the same as the standard labels, but maybe... This is Activision's version of, like, let's say, PlayStation's Greatest Hits, where those games got released, re-released, and they had green labels on the side. So, yeah. This is, uh, Mega Mania. For a second I thought I said Mega Man. I was like, what the hell? And that's Space Shuttle. And we got boxing down there. And those are the games that I received today. And we'll see if more come. I do have a few other surprises on the way, but... Yeah, check that out. I have some uh, cleaning up to do. I'll try to remove some of the marker off of those, and uh, what I'll do is I'll add that to the end of this video, which is uh, probably maybe about five seconds from now. So we're going to try to clean this cartridge right here and try to remove the uh, BS right there. It's a bunch of BS. I'm going to do a little experiment. I'm going to try uh, some dry erase markers to see if that does the trick. Alright, stand by. So this right here is what we're going to be using for uh, the uh, dry erase markers and the eraser. And uh, yeah, we're going to try this out, see if this works. Alright, so we're going to give this a try. Let's see if this works. We're just going to put a little bit of this on here. and. So this is a dry erase marker. So we'll let it sit there for a bit, and then we're going to use this eraser thing over right here, we'll see if it comes off. Give it a try. So far it's still on there. The actual portion of that marker came out of this, definitely not working out. So, since that didn't work out, I mean, I have a black one. Let me try that out. We'll see if that works. Let's scribble it on like that. We'll see if that comes off. We'll let it sit there for a bit. Now, I guess that's supposed to reactivate the actual ink and uh, help take it off. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. We'll see. It looks like it's starting to come off a little bit. It looks like it is coming off a little bit, but it's not. As much as I want it to. So it looks like it's getting a little bit better. Let me see if we can zoom in on that. Alright, let's leave it right there. So it is getting a, a tad bit better. It's not perfect. Uh, so I have one of these. These are a little bit larger. Let's try and see what that does. These are a different brand. This is a Expo brand. 
I think that should be enough. Those markers actually stink. Alright, so we're going to try this again and see if that does the trick. It looks like it's coming off a little bit. Oh yeah, you see right there, that's kind of turning this color. It's kind of taking the uh, the label off a little bit, so I may just leave it alone the way it is. I'm not sure. Yeah, see right there? I could probably fix that. I have a, an actual black marker I can go over this with to uh, see if I can fix that. So this is coming off a little bit, it's not perfect. <laughs> yeah, we'll give this one a try one more time. So what we'll do is we'll go over this. Put a little bit more right here. So right now Pac-Man has some here. I'm going to let it sit there for uh, probably a, a minute or so. And we'll see if that takes that off. It looks like someone put a pencil mark right here also, which... Uh, it looks like someone put a, a pencil mark right here also. And, uh, yeah, this part right here kind of looks dirty, so we'll see if we can clean that up as well. The cartridge does look a little faded. Okay, let's see if this comes off. Give it a try. Alright, so this is not... It looks like it's actually taking the, um... Yeah, that's not looking as good as I want it to. Let me flip this marker around and see if I can clean it off like this. So you don't want it to be too abrasive. I have a feeling that's what's happening here. Yeah, it's starting to take the, the actual label off a little bit. It's almost look, yeah, not working out. Alright, so... I have one of these markers. This is kind of of a it's a, basically for furniture, but I'm probably gonna put it right here just to touch that little part up. Let me see if I can do this without messing up here. Yeah, it's not going to look perfect, but it's better than what it was before. And that's a permanent marker, so that's not going to come off. So that's going to stay on there, as far as this goes. I'm probably going to leave it alone because this cartridge is kind of faded and uh, it's the best that you're probably going to get off of that cartridge. And so you can see there I kind of got the marker off but there's a shocking revelation here. Once I removed the BS, there's actually another name there. It says Glenn Sharp. And that looks like it was written, written in pen so I can't get that off unfortunately. I tried it over here on the uh, the pitfall label, I'm not going to do it any more than that. Because as you can see, these labels are too old to be messing around with that stuff. It's not a smart idea. If it was actually on the plastic portion of it, then you're probably fine. But yeah, uh, if you get any Atari cartridges with markers on the actual label and stuff, I don't 
probably recommend trying to remove it. This you probably can't do it. And there's the proof right there. And then that's the uh, try eraser trick right there. That didn't work out too well. I actually started removing the actual coloring around the uh, the label. Now, if you have any markers that are on the plastic portion of it, uh, I have successfully removed that before. So, yeah, that works on NES cartridges, and it works on uh, these as well. Unfortunately, on these cartridges, you're likely to see it on the label. And that sucks. That is BS. On uh, next week's episode of Memory Lane, who knows what game will be shown off. We got a whole bunch of games here. So there's plenty to select from, and uh, yeah, we will resume our normal gameplay footage. So yeah, look at that, the Atari 2600 Junior. Look at that, it looks fantastic. And there's the controller right there, look at that. Bam!